I'm going to show you how to configure an instance of MySQL in Amazon Web Services to be used as a DataSift destination. From the AWS console, I'll select RDS and launch a new DB instance. I'll get a choice of relational databases. For this, I'll choose MySQL. Now for a production environment, I'd select yes here to make sure the instance is highly available, but as this is just a demo, I'll choose no. From the instance details, I'll select the smallest class and no for multi AZ deployment. And I'll select the minimum allocated storage of five gig. I'll use the name screencast for my database identifier and I'll give it a username and password and click next step. In the additional config I'll use the name first DB for my database. This configuration form only allows a single database to be created but I can show you how to create more in a later screencast. Everything else I'll leave with the defaults. Because I'm only using this for a demo, I'll select No for automatic backups and Next Step. Then if you're happy with the review page, click Launch DB Instance. I'll close the notification page. This takes me to the list of instances in my account and you can see the new screencast is being created. It takes a few minutes, so I'll pause here until it's finished. OK, the instance is available now. That took about five minutes. I'll click the name to expand the instance details. Now, before we can test access to the instance, we need to configure the security group to allow the network traffic through. To configure the security group, I can just click on the group name. Now, to allow inbound traffic, which would be updates from the DataSift platform and any queries from my system, I need to open up some ports and IP addresses. I'll click on the Inbound tab for inbound traffic and click Edit. At the moment, we just have one rule that allows all traffic from AWS. I want to add a new rule. I'll click Add Rule. From the type, I'll need to select MySQL. This automatically fills in the protocol and the correct port number. Then we need to set the IP addresses. Now usually you would want to add the IP addresses of your systems which need to query the database and the IP addresses of the DataSift platform which are available in the documentation which I can show you here. To add all these addresses you'd need to add several rules using either individual IP addresses or a CIDR block of addresses. To save time in this demo, I'm going to open it for any IP address, which you would never do on a production system, and I'll click Save. Now I can go back to my RDS dashboard. If I click on my instances and click the Screencast instance, The last step is to verify access to the database from my system. I'll do that in a terminal window. To check I can connect, I'll use the MySQL command with a dash H and the endpoint for my database instance. The endpoint is listed in the database details here. So I'll copy this. and paste it into my terminal. I'll need to add the port number with a dash capital P. 3306 is the default. I'll add a username and I'll add the password. And that's us finished. The connection's been made so I know the instance is running and the network security is configured correctly to allow me to connect. Look out for more screencasts on configuring databases and tables in the MySQL instance and configuring the mapping of DataSift interaction fields to database fields.